Hello, everyone. It is good to see you. I am Lieutenant Justin at the Salvation Army. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Lieutenant Justin at the Salvation Army, and I am here to share a devotional thought with you today. I know right now is the time that we would normally do dinner church here, and I'm here at the core in the basement at the dinner church area. And unfortunately, you guys are not here, but I wish you guys were here. And uh, it would be amazing if we could be doing dinner church right now, but unfortunately we cannot. So I thought I would share with you a devotional message. I know the challenges are great right now and people are having a hard time. And uh, I just want to share with you about how good our God is, how much he loves us and, and how much we can trust God. We really can trust our God through hard times, good times. Oh my goodness, God is so faithful, he is so good, and we can trust in him in all times, uh, whether it's good times, bad times, or anything in between. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, God, we put our trust in you today. We put our faith in you. We delight in your salvation, God. We delight in the fact that you have chosen us for salvation. And indeed, God, uh, you are a God who loves us. You love us so much, God. Your glory is amazing. So, Heavenly Father, we pray you would speak right now, that your spirit would reign right now in our hearts, and that you would share with us the message that you have for us, God, and that you would speak through me, and that you would speak to your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, today we're going to talk about seven things that distinguish a truly Christian lifestyle, all right? See, one of the most important things about the Christian life is that we understand it's a lifelong journey. It starts the moment we receive salvation through Jesus Christ, but it doesn't end there. That is just the beginning. The hard part comes after we get saved and we begin to live the Christian lifestyle. See, that's the real challenge, you guys. M many of us were saved uh, a year ago, a few weeks ago even. Uh, uh, many of us were saved 20, 30 years ago. But it was a single moment when we got saved, when we believed in Jesus Christ and we found our salvation in his amazing glory. We understood the cross. We understood what he had done for us, and we believed it. We truly believed it. So, it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there, guys. That is the starting point of our salvation journey. The starting point is when we first got saved. But it is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle that we must practice throughout the years of our lives. It begins on the day we believe in Jesus. And we must live it out. So that is what we're talking about today. And this is where many believers fall short and end up sometimes drifting away from the message of truth. Don't let that be you, guys. Recognize that you will have to fight for your Christian faith and fight hard for it each and every day. Jesus never said it would be easy, did he? He said we would have struggles along the way, but he also taught us that we could overcome the struggles by believing in him and by living out our faith. Struggles come into our lives, you guys, to mold us, to shape us into becoming more like Jesus. Oftentimes, God will use the struggle that we're going through to build our character. We will come out later with a new faith, a new strength a new maturity in our lives that wasn't there before. So I, I just wanna share with you some tips. I think one of the best things you can do to, to uh, live out your salvation is to begin to order your life, to order your life. Begin to develop a weekly schedule for each week that you live. Just a basic schedule of how you're gonna live your life. See, I know for me, I have to have a, a written schedule of here's what I'm going to do each week. 
Otherwise, I will tell you guys that otherwise I will just sit at home and do nothing. That will be the Justin that many people would see. It would be doing nothing at home, browsing on social media and uh, watching TV. And that, that is not how I want to live my life. That's not my story. I do not want to be that person who just watches TV every single day. And so, so I try to practice a weekly lifestyle where I know on this day I'm going to be at this group. I know on this day I'm going to be at this meeting. I know on Sundays I'm going to be at church and I'm going to live by this lifestyle, this plan that I've set forth for myself. So if you haven't done that yet, I know there's a lot of people who just prefer to have that schedule where everything is planned out perfectly. And me, I tend to resist that. I do not like to plan out every little detail. It feels a little too constricting. It feels a little too uh, like my freedom's being taken away. But I, I would challenge you guys to find a happy balance in there where we're not, we're not ordering every single moment, but we're not just uh, doing nothing every day, you know? So that's very important, I think. Um, I, I always try to be at church every Sunday. Um, and that, it, that goes before when I was a pastor. Obviously, as a pastor, you have to be there every Sunday or something's not going to work out too good. But even before I was a minister, I would always be there every Sunday. And if I was traveling, I would find a church in the town that I was traveling at to go to church there. See, I really want to be a real Christian, you guys. I want to really live this out. I want to be real. I do not want to be half in and half out. I want to be on fire for God. And I hope that's your desire, too. So I've seen way too many who do not live that out, that they, they, they go to church maybe once or twice a month. And that, that is just not okay with me. I, I do not want to be that person. I want to be on the, the person who's inspired, who's on fire, who loves Jesus with his whole heart and whole mind. You know, that, that was the desire of one of my favorite theologians, John Wesley. He really wanted to be a real Christian. He did not want to be one foot in, one foot out, lukewarm, kind of in, kind of out. He wanted to be on fire a real Christian, that people would be able to look at his life and say, that was a real Christian. He really loved Jesus. We could tell by how he lived. So that's what I want you guys, and I want you guys to want that with me. So that's why we're on this journey together, because I'm your spiritual leader. If you're part of my church, I'm your spiritual leader, and I want to call you to a full, fruitful walk with Jesus. And I will call you to that time and time again. And and really because I'm calling myself to that, you guys. I'm calling myself to be a real Christian. And if, if we were all real Christians, if we really lived that out, imagine how it would change this city. It would be transformed, you guys, if we would just live this out in real ways. So that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about seven ways that we can really live this out. Seven ways, guys. This is really all about really practicing the faith being a true disciple, being that on fire John the Baptist out in the woods, out in the wilderness, a real Christian. Oh, I love that, you guys. I love the idea of being a real, on fire, edgy, excited, um, even a little goofy Christian who believes in crazy stuff like people getting healed uh, just because someone prays for them for worldwide transformation, for, for God ending the evils of our day and age, you guys. I want to believe all the way, all the way in. Even during this crisis right now, I want to believe that God's going to do great things. And I imagine that he will, and he is, you guys. I see it happening. God is doing great things for his people. So God is so good. So how can we develop this Christian lifestyle? Uh, because it's, 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 it's not a one and done thing. It is a it is a day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year journey through this life as a Christian, practicing it year in and year out. Good years, bad years, tough years, uh, happy years. We want to live it out. So I think the first step is that we determine in our minds that we're in it for the long haul. I have determined that in my minds, you guys. You know how Jesus says, "Count the cost, count the cost of the journey." I consider this a lifelong journey. I, I do not want to just be uh, a few years in and realize, oh, I can't handle this, you know? 
there have been times in this first nine months as an officer where I thought, wow, I'm really in over my head. But then I would remind myself, I've committed my whole life to serving God. So I knew this was going to happen. I knew there'd be hard times. I knew that I would struggle at times. I knew that I would cry out at times. I, I knew I would feel overwhelmed at times. But the truth is, since I've made that commitment in my mind, I know already that I'm going to feel this way and I'm going to power through it. I'm going to keep walking through it. I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep crawling along the gravel. Some days it feels like that. And then other days I'm going to be jogging along the valleys in the beautiful sunlight. So I, I hope that's your commitment too. Have you made that commitment? I'm in for it all my life. Every year of my life I'm in. That is my calling to you. Develop your Christian lifestyle. Determine in your mind that you're in for the long haul. Set up that weekly pattern of Bible reading, of small groups, volunteer work, you guys, worship, and get ready for the ride of your life. Because it is the ride of your life. This is the ride of your life, you guys. This is so uh, crazy. It is crazy. It's a little crazy being a Christian. A little bit crazy. You are going to go places. You're going to see things that you never thought you would see before. If I had not become a Christian, you guys, I would still be in Wausau, Wisconsin, my hometown, not doing a lot, you know? But by the grace of God, because I became a Christian, I left my hometown. I went, I've been all over the Midwest, Rochester, Minnesota, Chicago. Uh, oh, my goodness. St. Louis, uh, Albert Lee, Minnesota, now Owasso, Michigan. Of course, Escanaba, Michigan. I was there for two years. Guys, you'll, your Christian faith will take you places that you can't imagine. And it may, may not always be, be traveling about the country or the world, but it'll be traveling about your own city. And, and meeting people that you would have never met before in your own city. There's nothing wrong with staying in your hometown. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, as a Christian, you will go places, either physically or spiritually, that you can't possibly imagine. So let's talk. Let's jump right in. Here are the seven practices for genuine Christians to truly live out their faith. These are various practices that are basic tasks for Christians. These are not some far out things that only the uh, elite can do or only the, the special forces Christians. No, this is for everybody. So number one, evangelize to the lost. Evangelize means to share your faith. And this is a powerful thing and it is a hard thing to do. It is a tough thing to do sometimes, you guys, sharing our faith, but it is also an amazing thing to do. I tell you, I tell you guys, I, I've never felt closer to God or more at the center of his will than when I share the gospel with a stranger. When I talk to some, somebody about Jesus, I tell you guys, I feel Jesus' presence there like no other moment. I, I don't care if I'm fasting and praying for hours. There is nothing like evangelizing to some, 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 someone, whether it's a family member, a friend, or just someone you've met on the street. Okay, guys, it is so powerful. You realize in that moment, I am really a real Christian right now. I am sharing my faith, and it went really badly. I don't know if you've ever had it go really, really badly, but I have got, had it gone really badly. Like, that, that did not go well. <laughs> that did not go well at all. They, they blew up in my face. They, they walked away and laughed at me. You know, that, that kind of not good. But... I will tell you because I've been on the other side of this conversation, you guys. I will tell you, I remember every single person who shared the gospel with me over the last, I mean, before I was saved, over the prior seven years before I got saved, I remember each of them. Okay? When you share the gospel, that will stay with them their whole life. They will remember that, and they will remember that with joy because it led to their salvation. That's what I remember, that it's joyful. I remember those two girls who shared the gospel with me. I remember my grandpa giving me a Bible, and I remember that with joy. And at the time, I thought, these people are stupid. They are so annoying. Why won't they get away from me? However, that stayed with me my whole life. They shared the gospel with me. And it got me thinking about Jesus. So I remember those people, each of them, with joy. So 
even if you think you screwed it up, you shared the gospel, it didn't go well, it, it, it actually did go well. It actually did go well, especially if it seemed like it didn't. I am a living proof that that work is not in vain, you guys. It's not. I'm a pastor today because some trembling teenage girls had the guts to share the gospel with me. I'm a Christian today because my grandpa had the guts to hand me a Bible. I'm a Christian today because people prayed for me. So please do that. That's one. Evangelize to the lost. Two, read your Bible every single day. Yes. How many times have you heard me say this? If you're part of Dinner Church, if you're part of the Owasso Citadel, about 100 million times have I told you, read your Bible every day. The Bible is so powerful, you guys. We pray and we read it. It will change us within when we read it. The Bible is our daily bread, you guys. We need the words of God to strengthen us in these broken times. Because I will tell you guys, this is not a neutral thing. If we're not reading our Bible and growing closer to God, then we're watching TV, we're watching the internet, we're, we're watching Netflix, and we're being taught a secular worldview. We're being taught a non-Christian worldview by those inputs. The things in life affect us. The news media affects us. The news media is able to spread fear throughout the whole country. We see that right now. We see how uh, movies impact us, how media impacts us, how other people impact us. And the truth is, if we are not reading the word and, and even just listening to the Bible with an audio Bible, we're, we're not going to Bible study. We're not uh, studying deeper into the faith. We're not listening to YouTube sermons and stuff. Then we're we're not drawing closer to God. We're, we're not developing a truly Christian worldview. And I need that Christian worldview. I, I need to open my eyes and see the world the way that Jesus sees the world. I want to look at the world and see it from a Christian perspective. I, I want to see the world as, oh my goodness, God made this. God made those trees. God, God designed this planet. God made the, the, the galaxies, the stars, the the sun, Mars, Venus, this planet, Earth, God made it all. And that is the truth. That is the truth about life. The, this fairy story where we tell ourselves that we evolved over billions of years, where, where rocks developed into scum and scum developed into humans. Uh, what, 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 there, there's a funny way that they say it. They say, uh, from the goo to you through the zoo. Do you get it? From the goo? The primal goo through the zoo, so developing through the zoo, you, you know, you develop into a, you know, a bird, then, a, then an ape, then a human. <laughs> and it's just a silly story. It's not true. It is not true. It's so obvious when I look out at this world that God made the universe. I mean, how do you explain where it came from? How do you explain where the universe came from? Did it just pop into existence? Nothing can pop into existence. God made the universe. Makes perfect sense to me. So read your Bible every day because we need to develop that Christian worldview. Three, pray every day. Now, that there are two ty kinds of Christian prayer warriors. And the first that I'll talk about is the night prayer warrior. This is what I am. I am a night prayer. I pray into the night. I, I will start praying at 10 p.m. or 11.30 p.m., sometimes at 11 p.m., and, and this is how I love to pray. I love to pray into the night because that's when I'm most focused. That's when my mind is working the best at night. Now, that, I think that's about 50% of the church, but the other 50% are a strange lot. I do not understand these people, but they wake up at like four in the morning or five in the morning and they pray through the morning. They'll pray for an hour, two hours, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes in the, in the bright early hours of the morning. Now, I remember growing up, going over to my grandma Chuck's house, and I would see the look on my grandma's face at about 8.30 a.m. She looked like she did not want to be awake yet. And that is how I feel in the morning. I, I cannot pray for an hour in the morning. I'm working on praying more in the morning because I know see, the people who pray in the morning have a, have, a, have a good jump on us, night prayers, because they're praying at the start of their day. And I'm praying at the end of my day. And I think it would be much better to pray at the beginning of our day because then we're starting the day in the right mindset. So um, I'm trying to work on that morning prayer stuff, you guys. It's hard. It's really tough because I just wake up like, oh, no, no, I, I exist. Oh, boy. 
oh boy, I'm so tired right now. I just want to disappear. So it's hard, but I'm, I'm working on it. But are you a night prayer or, or, or a morning prayer? I, I don't know which you are, but I'm a night prayer. I would like to pray a good half hour, 45 minutes, an hour, a little over an hour. I set that my goal each night is to pray for about an hour. I don't always get there. Sometimes more like 20 minutes or a half hour, 45 minutes. But I said my goal is to pray an hour a day. And, and some people don't like that I set a time limit that they say, well, it's just all about what you feel in your heart. And I, I, I agree with that to a certain extent that it's, it is about um, our heart. God looks at the heart. But if we're only praying for like two, three, four, five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, what does that say about our heart? You know, if, if we really love God, if we really love Jesus, we should spend real time with him. You know, I, you can tell if someone loves you and cares about you by the time they spend with you. If they're spending an hour a day with you, they obviously love you. If they're spending two minutes a day with you, well, it makes you wonder. So it is about the heart, but I challenge you, uh, uh, try to pray for a good amount of time. It's, it's, it's an important thing. So um, I challenge you to that. Pray every day. This is not rocket science. Uh, uh, read your Bible, pray, evangelize to the lost. You notice where I put evangelize, right? I put evangelize at number one. That is a huge, huge deal, you guys, that we share our faith. A lot of Christians do not share their faith. If, you, if, if, if they had a camera on them and you watch them through their whole week, they may not share their faith once. That's wrong. That's not right. We got to be sharing our faith. Share that. You know, there's two ways to, I'm going to jump back to one for a second. This is my, uh, this is my soapbox here, so I'm just going to get on it real short, okay? Soapbox. So you can share the gospel two different ways. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? An introvert is like me, where I am not that great uh, with a group of people, but I am, I am great on my own in my bedroom or in my, my apartment or my house or whatever. Um, I am good at that. So here's how I share the gospel on social media. I share the gospel on Facebook, Twitter, all these platforms. I'm, I'm blasting out the truth, blasting out the truth. And, and you can share the gospel that way. You can get the word out. I, I, I write a blog. And you can blog that word out to thousands of people. Now, now there's also extroverts. And I, I kind of envy these people because they share the gospel in person with strangers, with people they know, family members, friends, coworkers. They are just always sharing that gospel with people. That's what I wish I could do. And, and I force myself to do that at times because I think we should have a good mix of both. You know, share the gospel online, share the gospel through writing, but also share the gospel with people in person. You know, that's a, that's a really cool thing to do. You really feel the joy of Christ. Well, let's let's uh, jump back forward to number four. We're at four. Okay, number four for a Christian lifestyle. You tithe properly and you give regular offerings. You always hear the phrase tithes and offerings, all right? Tithing as a general principle is that you give 10% of your income back to God. 10% though is the minimum because the New Testament standard is to give all. So begin to give more as you, well, once you set that pattern, begin to give more. That's, I challenge myself to do that, you know? As your officer, if I didn't tithe, would I have any right to tell you to tithe? No. Absolutely not. So we should be tithing. We should be giving offerings. We should, should be um, being generous. Generosity is a spiritual gift, you guys. And I get it. If you're a millennial listening to this, you think, oh, the church just wants my money. That's what I thought too, you guys. I thought, well, the church just wants my money. And there are churches like that that do just want your money. I'm sure they are out there. I've seen them on TV, I think. I can't judge, but, but it seems that way, you know, just from viewing it. But the church does not want your money, okay? At least not this church. This is about you obeying God. Because this is a command of God and we, we have to live it out, okay? So I know it's challenging, but it shows our heart again. Do I really love God or do I love money more? A lot of people love money quite a bit. So I give back 10%. You know what? I didn't tithe before, but I, it was actually in Escanaba that I met a guy who told me about tithing. And I started tithing. I was in debt, $10,000, and I couldn't explain why. Now, I had a good job. I had good money coming in, but I just kept going into debt. Once I started tithing, I, I climbed completely out of debt. So it was just amazing. It's, it's faithfulness to God. I'm giving back what is God's. And I tithe on the gross. I, I don't tithe on the net. I always tithe on the, on the gross. So I challenge you to do that. And also give offerings. 
you you see a homeless guy, you give him something. You you uh, donate to send Bibles to uh, Marines in 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 uh, in Iraq or something. You 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 give him money to sponsor a child, something like that. You just you give back. You you see a neighbor or a friend who's hurting, who needs help with groceries. You buy him some groceries. You drop it off at their door. You know you you give offerings on an individual basis, on a corporate basis. However the Lord leads you to do that, he will lead you to give. So just to watch for those opportunities to give, you guys. Number five, keep the Sabbath rest. So we are no longer under the Old Testament law of Moses. This is true. But the Sabbath rest is still an important teaching of God. Do you have one day a week where you rest? Now, as Americans, we don't like to rest. So I know I'm stepping on some toes here, but you got to rest. Take one day a week and rest, you guys. We can't work seven days a week. We have to rest. And there may be weeks where we do have to work all week, you know, but take a Sabbath. Jesus rested. God rested. So we should rest. We can. We should. Number six. We're almost there. Number six. Care for the needs of the poor. Oh, yes. Care for the needs of the poor. As the Salvation Army, we are good at this one. That's good. That's very good. So how can you uh, care for the needs of the poor? Here's the way you don't do it. You don't do it by looking at the Salvation Army and say, oh, they're helping people over there. Well, I'm done. Wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Okay. You want to get involved. Volunteer in the kitchen. Donate to the food pantry. Get involved. Because it's not just for someone else to do over there. It's for us to do. My calling. I got to serve. I can't just be the officer who watches his cook do it. I got to do it myself. That's my, that's my calling. So care for the poor. And there are so many great ways to do this, you guys. You can, uh, you can volunteer at the food pantry. You can visit the shut-ins. You can give out clothing to those who need it. You can uh, visit those in the jail. Uh, you can volunteer at a homeless shelter. You can uh, give out water bottles to people on the streets who are maybe too hot. Um, there are all sorts of great ideas. So check in, in Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. This tells you all the ways we're called to care for the needs of the poor. All right. Last category. Number seven, serve in various ways in church ministry. Guys, you guys are the church. I'm not, I, I mean, I am the church too, but it, it, we, we have the wrong mindset sometimes. We think, okay, there's the pastor. He's doing it over, we're going to watch and we're going to cheer him on. And that's it. No, wrong. That's, that is wrong. That's completely wrong. I'm the pastor. There's pastors. They're doing a good job. Your job. You're the foot soldiers. You're the troops charging into battle. <laughs> that's awesome. So we want to live it out participate in it. And a lot of you guys already do that. And it's beautiful. I like to watch people serve sometimes because it's so beautiful to watch someone caring for someone else and loving someone else, sharing the gospel with someone else. It is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing to behold. It is humanity as we are meant to be loving others and caring for others. And when I see someone just giving of their time, their talents, it is one of the most amazing things ever. So do it. It's so cool. I love it. Don't be part of the dreaded 80-20 rule. Have you heard of the 80-20 rule where 20% of the people do 20% of the people, not a lot, do 80% of the work? Yes, this is not good. This is not good. We, we have seen churches like that where it's a small group of people do almost all the work, and that's no good. So I challenge you, be part of that fighting force. Don't be a bystander. Don't be someone watching and just kind of sitting back and thinking, oh, they're doing great. Nope. Jump in and be part of it. You will get your uniform a little dirty, but that's all right. That's all right. A dirty uniform is exactly what uh, shows a fighting soldier. So also I would challenge you on the other end of that spectrum, don't be a martyr. We have martyrs who do too much work and they burn themselves out. And then they blame the people who they worked with saying they made me do all the work and then I burned out. Well, it's your responsibility to not do too much as well, to try to cut back a little bit at spots so that it is manageable and you won't burn out. And I'm challenging myself on that one, you guys, because uh, at times I feel like I might burn out if I don't slow down a little bit and just try to keep pace because it's a long life. 
It's, uh, it's short, but it's also long. So um, I challenge you guys to do ministry. And I, I know it's hard right now during the, uh, the, the crisis we got going on right now, guys, that uh, how do we do ministry during this crisis where people are quarantined? Well, there's a lot of ways we can do that, like social media. Everyone's on the internet right now, you guys. So share the gospel on the internet. Share some sermon videos. Share some scriptures. Share, share some uh, uh, pictures with uh, quotations on them that draw people to Jesus. Because the truth is everyone's online right now because they're locked down. So share the gospel that way. I'm sure there's other ways right now that we can uh, help people and bless people and encourage people. Maybe a phone call. Maybe um, just leaving a, a care package at your neighbor's door. Hey, I love you. God bless you. Seek Jesus through this crisis. There are ways we can serve during this crisis, guys. So please do it. This is our chance because people are hurting right now. People are confused right now. If I'm a little nervous as a Christian right now, imagine how people feel who don't know Jesus. Imagine how they feel right now. They must be horrified, terrified. This, this virus is going to get me and, and, and my world will end. Because they're, they're basing their whole world on themselves. So teach Jesus right now. Share the gospel. Hey, you don't have to rely on yourself. That's a dead end. Turn to Jesus Christ. He's the king of kings. And he reigns over this stupid little virus. This virus is a bug for, to be smashed under the foot of Jesus right now. I will tell you that much. Jesus Christ reigns over this silly little coronavirus. I guarantee you that. So let's pray, you guys. Would you guys close in prayer with me? Heavenly Father, we declare your victory over the coronavirus, God. We know you are greater. You are much greater, God. So, Lord, you have called us to be the church as, at such a time as this. You have called us to be the church right now, God, to help us to be the church in all these ways that we've talked about. Help us to share the gospel. Help us to read the Bible. Help us to fast and pray during this time. Help us, God to care for the needs of the poor. Help us to be the church right now, God. We trust you. Help us to be active Christians, real on fire Christians. That is the desire of our hearts, God, and we trust you for that. We know Jesus Christ of Nazareth has paid it all on the cross. He has died for our sins, so we are made pure in your sight. Help us to then live that out and share that message with others, God. We love you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Be well, guys. God bless you.